Well, I was born here, so I lived in Redmond for 80 years. And then I decided to move south, so I moved south to Churchbridge, which is only nine or eight miles down the road. Um, I started my schooling here. I taught, or went to school out at Cut Arms School, which was west of town here, and I took my grade one to five there. Then I took grade six to 12 in Bredenbury, and I was the last class of Bredenbury to graduate from grade 12 out of here. After that, graduation classes, or grade 11 and 12 went to Salco School. The um, Berezina School came in in 1964, and then Potash was still blooming, so they opened. The, they had to put a basement under that school. So in 1965, there was two classrooms over here, upstairs and down, and they were all con ready construction. Two more classrooms. By about 1967, they had started the far end of the school, and they were building another classroom. They built on a library, a large staff room, a workroom and the gym. And the gym was used as two classrooms for quite some time. Uh, one class faced one way and the other class faced the other way. There might have even been four classes in, four grades in there. But, but they still found the need that they had to build, so they started building to the south, I guess it would be. And that's when they built on another classroom, science room, a larger office, and then this big room for the kindergarten grade one and two class. I came in here in 64. I took a bit of time off when I had our daughter and um, taught a couple of years in Salkots, but most of my 35 years were spent here. Teaching when the new part opened here was really great because it was spacious and it was top of the notch classroom. Uh, we had kindergarten grade one and two. Um, sometimes we had two teachers teaching in this room and uh, sometimes we had an aide with me, but not very often, but usually it was just, and it was so spacious here, and uh, we had a lot of supplies, a lot similar to what we had here. It was well equipped, and uh, air conditioning, which the rest, some of the school didn't have down the road. <laughs> and, uh, it was really a nice place to work. I came to the school in 2001 for the closure. It was very hard for me to drive by the school because everything just seemed to be in such terrible shape. And, you know, it was such a beautiful building and a well-structured building. It was sort of hard to see it go down the tube. And, and there was uh, broken windows and boarded up things, which really was hard to take, but. After the school was closed, it was a total mess. To be honest with you, I've been in Bredenbury since 1950. 2001, the school was closed. Uh, students all moved to Salcoats or to Yorkton, and the building was left unoccupied and was a total mess after the place shut down and there was nothing going on here at all. First of all, we they renovated the gymnasium and the north end of the school for the fire department. And then the grand plan came to be that it would all get redone with provision for our new daycare. I have lived in the area for 15 years and I have been a volunteer for eight. The fire hall was actually located and attached to the town's public works building and so we shared part of the fire department with the town of Red Marie's public works. As the RM and the town um, expands uh, and we also want to take on more responsibilities, we decided that it was best to move the fire department to an appropriate location. This new location is actually a refurbished part of the old Red Marie school and we've added on uh, four bays. The old fire department had two bays only. Everyone was a little skeptical at first just because of the state of the school um, before we started renovations. But once we started cleaning up the building and refurbishing it to our purposes, everybody got on board immediately and decided that this was the perfect location. 
They were in the midst of the renovation when I came on board, though it was uh, the cement was broken because they were doing plumbing, electrical was hanging. When I first started, it was a bit of anxiety, but plus excitement just because I knew what it could become. And now seeing it today, it is way beyond what I've ever expected. We have the potential to be licensed for 46. We have an infant room, a toddler room, a preschool room, and a school age room. I mean, just, just the fact that they're, they've taken an old school and revitalized it, and there's going to be so many new memories made here. It looked like it was never gonna change or become something like this. I've been in this room before anything was done to it, and it's a great facility for a little town because for some, pe some people, they don't wanna drive 30 minutes or 25 minutes and go to the gym, and this is just in town. You could walk here, and, and it's, it's been a great renovation and a great idea that people had to do this, the town did this. It kinda gives me more energy in the sense of boosts my energy and I want to do more stuff, you know, and it just doesn't make me want to stay at home and sit in my room. It's done a lot to me and I love coming to the gym and I like working out in this gym and I like the equipment here. It's amazing how people have done little rooms into a spa or the daycare in, in this room, the gym here. After the renovations, it turned out better than I ever expected, and I'm enjoying the space, and it is absolutely beautiful. I'm Amanda Lauer, and I am an esthetician at Sunstone Spa. During the renovations, it was such a great collaboration of people and support from everyone around. It was just so amazing to see. The space we created is different rooms for different services. Um, facial room having a nice ambiance to relax. Pedicures have massage chairs in them and a separate waxing room that's clean and bright. Just a place for everyone to come relax. I am blessed to have my daughter who created the logo as well as we collaborated on the name. The spa here has a really nice atmosphere. It's nice and cozy. Um, a really nice view out into the playground area. We sell products as well, gift cards, stuff like that for special occasions, and to maintain your routine at home. It was always just kind of the old school that everyone was just like, oh yeah, it's just kind of sitting in the corner over there. It's really nice to have this space being used. It was just so sad to see it just sitting there. And so it's nice to see new life in it and also within the community through that. I was overwhelmed. I just couldn't believe that uh this could happen here. I was in here in this particular room for 16 years, right till I retired teaching. And uh, it was a real honor. I couldn't believe that you had, I don't know who came up with the idea or all of that. I just never ever suspected any of it. It was a reading series, a new reading series that came out and I don't know just what year it came out, but it was a brand new reading series. Mr. Muggs would always disappear. He would arrive back. He sometimes came on the train. We even had him fly in on a helicopter one day and landed in the classroom. The mail truck bought him, and I can't remember all the other things, but every year it was something different. Totally impressed, totally impressed. I don't think it could have turned out any better. We have lots of room. We've got lots of light. It's just wonderful, and everybody that comes to the meetings are so impressed with everything. Community support has been wonderful. I mean, people have donated generously with their time and money. To see a facility like this sitting vacant, not being used for anything, and slowly going to ruin, I think a lot of communities could take a lesson from what we have done here in town and look at reusing, remodifying, or fixing up old buildings to make them usable. The benefit to the community, we have more space for better equipment. We can now host classes 
not just for the Bread and Brave Fire Department, but other towns and other fire departments. We can work together and we have enough space to help everybody educate in the same facility. The fire department is in a better position to do its job now more than it ever has. People's reaction to the building has been just wow. Everyone walks in and they're just taking it all in. To have these facilities for the community members to use will benefit everybody. It is important for small towns to keep up with modernization because it helps these small towns stay together and stay connected rather than all going towards a big center where everything is kind of more anonymous. It helps keep community and keep those relationships strong. I grew up in a community where it was, everybody knew each other, they talked to each other and got neighbors. It helped me in the sense of not growing up in a city because I was able to enjoy that, like the spirit of community coming in together. Come in with sometimes with a buddy or there's a kid that I know here and I'll work out with them, but I actually enjoy coming in, doing my thing and working on making myself better in every way, in every aspect. And uh, I don't know, I can't, in a sense, having this gym in town kind of makes me help other bodies of mine. Hey, you should come and work out with me here. Kind of get them into that realm of helping themselves, you know? Bringing the daycare to Breddenbury has created at least nine jobs, if not more. We have five full-time staff, plus some part-time. When you have the daycare here, you are bringing, you're keeping the younger kids here, and then hopefully that they eventually will not move out of this community and raise their children. Help the community to grow, encourage young families to live here in a small, safe community where there are children that can be safe and cared for. It was tremendous work for the community to accomplish this and it will also need to continue to have community support in this area to help support the ongoing programs and to keep up. Fundraising will need to continue and need volunteers and supporters of various activities that need to take place. The modernized facilities need everyone's help and support and will have to continue to keep going for the community. I just want to thank all those who took the initiative to see the future of keeping a small town alive. And I thought the people that work here, they're going to uh, experience some of the same feelings I had. <laughs>